Okay, I want to pick up where we left off from Teaching Company, the New Testament. Okay, and this is Teaching Company, New Testament 2. In other words, I'm going to make some more comments about that particular course. Um, and that's by um, Bart D. Ehrman, Professor Bart D. Ehrman. Well, um, I was springboarding off of last um, segment of the last uh, lecture. We're talking about the prophecies and textual criticism and uh, dating and timing and so forth. Now, one of the things the uh, secular critics, uh, textual critics do is they say, well, um, in the Gospels where Jesus prophesies, and they don't use the word prophesy, they'll say where Jesus mentions the destruction of the temple, that clues us into the idea that this gospel must have been written after 70 AD. But they're breaking some of the rules that they've already established in terms of in rules of engagement and textual criticism. In this case, the genre. Okay, the genre that Jesus was speaking in, namely prophecy, okay, prevents them from making that connection and saying that it, therefore it must have been written after 70 because they're not considering the fact that Jesus was prophesying. He didn't mention it as something that had happened. He was mentioning something was going to happen. Now suppose that you don't believe in prophecy, you don't believe in supernatural things like that. Well at least you could be fair enough and say that Jesus made a lucky guess. But you can't be true to the rules of engagement and just say therefore you know he's, he, he, he had to be talking after 70 because it's not it's you got the, your genre is mixed up he was definitely speaking in terms of prophecy so I want to get that out of the way right there that's that's one of the things that the um, modern uh, liberal uh, critics will will try to confuse uh, their audience with and uh, disparage uh, the records of the biblical Jesus. Okay, he also reviews key texts omitted from the New Testament. <laughs> what do you mean omitted? I mean, key texts omitted from the, the New Testament. Well, let me see. Um, that could be anything. It could be Shakespeare. Shakespeare's not in the New Testament. I mean, uh, once again, they're back to their arbitrary tricks. Don't fall for it. Okay. The earliest records of Jesus are probably correct in portraying him as a kind of apocalyptic prophet who anticipated that God would soon intervene in the course of history to overthrow the forces of evil and establish his good kingdom on earth, and that people needed to repent in preparation for it. Okay, one of the things I found in this <coughs> New Testament course is this um, construction of uh, Jesus as a uh, Jewish apocalyptic prophet which means in basically someone who is anticipating the end of the world. Now, Jesus was anticipating an end, that's for sure, but it was an end to the sacrificial system because as the sacrificial lamb, there was no need to sacrifice animals any longer. This is what uh, he, pro one of the reasons he said that the temple would be destroyed. It's the sacrilege that makes desolate. At least it's one application of the sacrilege that makes desolate passage. Um, the idea also that Jesus was an apocalyptic helps them um, spread some confusion, which is one of the things they want to do, because wh what they're trying to do is get Jesus as a confused uh, Jew, and Paul as an educated uh, Roman who uh, knows how to um, conduct <laughs> a religious campaign properly to the educated populace. Poor old Jesus, the blue collar worker, wasn't able to do that. This is the way they're trying to portray Jesus. Well, see, they're taking so much out of context. They can contextualize the words of Jesus in the context that Jesus had already provided. For instance, what I had just said about the temple. That's the appropriate way to do it. You don't have to introduce these new ideas. Um, uh, Professor Ehrman goes so far 
this is this is bizarre. Okay, you go so far as to say, Jesus, uh, I, I have it's hard to keep a straight face. <laughs> but he says, Jesus always referred to this son of man person, like you know Jesus respecting this son of man to be. Well, if you look at uh, in in the text, he's obviously speaking about himself in the third person. It's obvious. I mean, anybody with a third grade education can pick that up. Why is he introducing this bizarre notion that Jesus was talking about? Because it fits in with his apocalyptic um, convention, you know, con concoction or construction, or whatever you ever call it. Um, but it's almost embarrassing to think that, um, like I said, the, the, it's it's hard to interpret the things he's um, promoting as simply poor scholarship. There's an agenda here, and um, it just goes on and on. Uh, let me see. It says here, um, portions of the New Testament were included 100 years after the death of Christ. Well, I think that I've established, for instance, the Gospels were written in, within 50 days, if you heard my previous lecture. Nobody can argue that. I don't see how that can be argued. I've heard some, I've heard some arguments. I mean, I, I can accept some... Um, entertaining some possibilities that there might have been, um, you know, but I'm within all the rules of engagement of the text to say that they're written 50 days. Um, we don't know that. There's no reason to, to, to just throw that out there, that this idea that there's 100 years. Um, there's really, that's once again, it's just something they're coming up with off the wall and throwing that out there, there um, that doesn't uh, doesn't hold water, I must say. Um, so at any rate, I think that um, I will conclude this uh, lecture now um, and prepare um, some more for um, future date. But I hope you enjoyed some of this information because you probably get, be seeing ads for the teaching company. I know that they're advertising in World Magazine, for instance. Um, or you might be getting um, their um, catalogs in the mail. Um, and once again, this is not to disparage anybody from purchasing, making purchases from the teaching company. I still do. Um, it's just simply to warn you um, and, and give you an idea of how to navigate um, what it is they're they're throwing out there because I think you know it can catch you off guard if you're if you haven't um, already um, studied some of this material so um, I appreciate your listening and I'll see you on some other day thanks bye.